Former assassin Jack is trying to leave his past behind, which Ingrid is unaware of, while spending time with his lover in the icy hills of Sweden. When they go for a walk early, one morning, they discover tracks in the snow, though Ingrid believes they might be hunters. Jack is skeptical and knows better. He pulls Ingrid into a hiding place, just in time to stop gunfire from the woods. Jack surprises Ingrid by showing her that he is armed, and uses it to dispatch the assailant with a single, well-aimed shot. As Jack starts searching the body in front of them, he tells Ingrid to go to the house and phone the police. But as soon as Ingrid turns around, Jack murders her as well since he is aware that his identity has been revealed. Another assassin is waiting for his colleague in a car nearby, but Jack discovers him and takes his life as well. After that, Jack leaves the nation quickly and travels to Rome, Italy, where he meets up with Pavel, his handler. Pavel still thinks Ingrid may have set him up. Even after Jack clarifies that he was discovered by the Swedes, and that she had nothing to do with it. Jack is reminded that he shouldn't make friends in this line of business. Pavel had arranged for Jack to reside at Costovecchio, a very little town on the map, because he can't stay in such a large city, while still taking care of the people who found Jack. Jack drives to Costovecchio in the automobile Pavel had provided for him, but as soon as he gets there, he despises the town for being so little and dull. Jack makes the decision to proceed to Castel del Monte, a bustling town, turn around the automobile, and discard the phone Pavel gave him. He takes on the name Edward, and moves into a very modest apartment here, yet, the majority of his neighbors refer to him as, the American. Jack is acting like a photographer, so he establishes a daily routine, that includes working out, going to the neighborhood cafe, and taking his camera to scenic locations. Even though Jack is now leading a tranquil life, he is always vigilant about potential threats, and uses binoculars to monitor Costovecchio in case somebody is hunting for him. Because of his ongoing vigilance, Jack is always shocked whenever the neighbor's scooter emits a noise akin to a gunshot. When Jack claims he isn't good with machines, Father Benedetto approaches him one morning while he is having problems using a vending machine and helps him out. Jack tries to decline Benedetto's invitation to wine at his house later, but he keeps telling him that priests see everything. Benedetto asks him a lot of questions, in an attempt to get to know him better. After that, Jack calls Pavel on a payphone, and Pavel is upset with him, for giving up his cell phone. Pavel continues to pitch Jack a job that would not require him to kill anyone, rather, it would involve creating a unique suit for another assassin. Jack pledges to give it some thought. Jack visits Benedetto in the evening to have that drink. Benedetto is taken aback that Jack isn't studying the history of Italy, while taking pictures of the nation. Then he makes the observation that his American nature, is likely what leads him to believe that he can live in the now and ignore the past. Later on, Jack takes a car to Sulmona, where he shops and keeps an eye on Mathild from a distance. Jack takes the table next to her at a cafe, and when she spills her newspaper, he picks it up, signaling that he's the gunsmith she's been looking for. Jack accepts Mathild's offer when she gives him all the information he needs for her weapon. He also mentions that a man has been observing them, but Mathild insists she is working alone. Jack thinks he sees the same guy around town later, when he gets home, so he tries to stay away from him. Jack starts to have problems sleeping at night and pulls out his rifle in response to any noise. A few days later, Jack visits the post office to retrieve an extremely important parcel, containing the parts he needs to begin assembling the weapon. Everything goes together nicely for the most part, but he will need a few more parts to assemble the silencer. He chooses to go to a seedy house at night and meets Clara, a call lady, who completely blows his mind. Later on, when Benedetto's automobile breaks down in the middle of the road, Jack assists him in fixing it. As a token of appreciation, the priest extends an invitation to supper at his residence, where Jack is treated to Benedetto's tales of his interactions with the locals. Benedetto worries about Fabio, the neighborhood mechanic, despite the fact that he seems like a kind man, who might be up to no good. He has a picture of him. Benedetto asks Jack cynically if he has ever been anything other than a photographer. While Jack wonders if Benedetto has ever desired to be anything other than a priest, he knows Jack is richer than a journalist should be. Even though Jack had told him he wasn't good with machines, but Jack doesn't take the bait. Instead, he fixes Benedetto's automobile with ease. Jack intentionally damages his automobile the following day, and brings it to Fabio's garage. At first, Fabio is reluctant to assist the enigmatic stranger, but after learning that Jack is Benedetto's friend, he changes his mind. Jack says he enjoys vehicles as a pastime, and asks if he can have some parts to mend a broken drive shaft, Fabio agrees to give them to him for nothing. As Jack searches for the materials he needs to create the silencer, 
he finds that Fabio is in possession of a duplicate of the identical picture that Benedetto had. Jack can't help but give Clara a flirtatious glance, as he passes her on the way home from church. Jack picks up his work on the pistol again as soon as he gets to his apartment, successfully completing the silencer by dusk. He tries the gun in the woods the following day to make sure it functions flawlessly. Jack decides to leave rather than pick another female when he finds out later that Clara isn't working today when he goes to the seedy house to celebrate. When Jack visits a cafe in the evening, he finds that the same man is still observing him. The clerk gives Jack an envelope that someone left for him, and in it, Jack discovers a clip from the newspaper about the bodies he left behind in Sweden. He chooses to take an alternative route home to his apartment just in case, and he puts his gun particularly near to his bed. Later on, Jack goes to the train station to pick up Mathild, who is hiding her identity from prying eyes by donning a different wig. Then he takes her to a location in the forest near the river that only he knows is hidden. But before they start working, Mathild still wants to take a walk to make sure no tire tracks or footprints are there. Later, Jack shows Mathild the gun he manufactured and places down a picnic blanket to use as a cover in case the police come to look into the area. Putting it together with skilled precision, Mathild orders special rounds made of mercury. She asks Jack to shoot at the flowers next to her from a reasonable distance, after she brings her own target to test the rifle, which she does without any issues. Jack is taken aback by her level of faith in him to spare her life, and he shoots the flowers without causing her to flinch. He even impresses Mathild with the silencer he created, since she was unable to determine the source of the bullet. After they're through, Mathild pays the first half of the amount and requests a few final tweaks and a delivery date of the first of the following month. In addition to tossing the bullet casings into the river, Jack also dropped some wine, he even took the trouble to freeze it, onto the grass as part of the cover. Mathild is told some interesting information about that particular type of butterfly, by Jack as it falls on her arm at that same moment. When Jack denies having brought a woman here previously, Mathild refers to him as, Mr. Butterfly, and asks if he has ever done it before. Jack visits the raucous home in the evening to have some fun with Clara, who also refers to him as, Mr. Butterfly, due to his tattoo, Jack is thinking about something, and Clara can tell. She doesn't have to act on behalf of him as she does for other clients, Jack says, adding that he doesn't think her concern is real. Additionally, he tips well, and when Clara brings up the fact that she makes more money with him than all the other females combined, he admits that he doesn't see the other girls. Jack keeps working on the rifle's modifications and the mercury-filled bullets, but he also takes breaks to go to the cafe. He sees Clara one afternoon as she and her girlfriend head to the movies. After engaging in some small talk, and Clara mentioning that she is free on Wednesday, Jack suggests they meet at their regular location. When he dares not bring up the lewd house in front of her girlfriend, Clara takes advantage of the situation and asks him to meet her at a restaurant. Clara is trying to get him to say, what the, usual place, is. When the women go, Jack reads the newspaper and becomes concerned, when he sees stories about call girls dying. Later that evening, while Jack is walking home, he discovers the typical guy is actually following him instead than just observing. While waiting for the man to pass by, Jack hides in an alleyway, takes off his shoes, and follows after him while brandishing a revolver. His objective is to kill him, but it gets derailed, when the neighbor unexpectedly shows up on his scooter, and lets the guy know they are there. Jack retrieves the keys from the dead and follows the assassin using the scooter after he shoots the driver and flees in his car. Jack starts to pursue this man throughout the town in an attempt to kill him but he continues missing the mark. Jack eventually gets the automobile to crash when they reach the road outside of town, after hitting a tire. Jack then approaches him to grab his gun away and kill him manually. Later, Jack phones Pavel to inform him that the Swedes have located him once more, but Pavel advises him to remain where he is and complete the task. When Jack asks how he was located, Pavel simply says that Jack is becoming less and less powerful. Jack struggles to sleep that night because his fantasies are plagued by guilt over killing Ingrid, even though it's barely light outside. He chooses to go for a stroll and meets Benedetto, who enjoys going for early morning walks to thank God for everything and ask him to watch over sinners. When Jack points out that all men are sinners, Benedetto responds by explaining that people who want peace have a long history of sin and that Jack himself has committed many sins. After learning of the local death, the previous evening, Benedetto asks Jack if he needs a confession. Jack, however, snubs him and taunts him back, saying he can tell Fabio is Benedetto's secret son. While Benedetto acknowledges that he has erred in the past, he does, at least, have a relationship, unlike Jack. Jack meets Clara at the restaurant in the evening, 
When the waiter tries to accept Cora's order instead of Jack's due to her gender, Jack is really impressed with how she handles him, and he even buys her a flower from the flower boy. Although Clara objects since she believes the seller believes they are a couple, she interprets Jack's purchase as a positive sign. She is aware that Jack is hiding something, but she is content that he does not claim to be married. They spend the night together in Cora's apartment after supper. When Jack snoops around the following morning, while Clara is taking a shower, he discovers a gun in her purse, which makes him suspicious. He completes the transaction later that day and purchases a bag, and many office supplies to appropriately conceal the gun. Having completed his assignment, he may now follow Clara about to make sure she isn't a spy. Though he can't tell if the men she is seeing are clients or criminals, he does see her with other men. When Jack phones Pavel the next day, he requests an extension of two days before making the drop, and Pavel agrees. Jack takes Clara on a picnic in the forest hidden location in the afternoon. Jack declines to accompany Clara when she runs into the river and sheds her clothing to go swimming. Additionally, Clara discovers bullet cases in the river. Nevertheless, she accuses hunters of being responsible, and Jack simply tosses them back. As they enjoy the picnic, Jack gets anxious and grabs his gun to defend himself when Clara reaches into her handbag. Even though it turns out that Clara was only reaching for her sunscreen, his response starts a fight. Jack agrees to believe Clara when she says she has a gun to defend herself since a murderer is pursuing call girls. After that, Clara invites him to accompany her to the town procession tomorrow. When Jack responds that he'll give it some thought, Clara asks whether they may start going on dates regularly. Jack quickly dispels the notion, saying he can't stay indefinitely, which makes Clara kiss him and implore him to stay. When Jack gets home, he can't stop thinking about Cora's request. So he decides to phone Pavel to let him know that he's heading out once he completes the delivery. Pavel appears to accept this without any issues, but he phones Mathild with a unique request after Jack hangs up. The following day, Mathild is wearing a different wig, and Jack meets her at a roadside cafe. After giving her the mercury bullets in a special can, he hands it to her. Mathild takes the suitcase and excuses herself to use the restroom, where she gets ready to use the extra rifle she packed. Jack is lonely and nervous because he thinks Mathild, is taking too long and the other clients have departed. Jack decides to wait outside just in case, and Mathild brings him the remaining cash, while keeping the revolver ready in his pocket. She appears to have more to say, but just then, a bus carrying kids pulls up, and Mathild exits before they can be seen. Jack drives back to town, and Mathild follows him while on the phone with Pavel, requesting that she assassinate Jack right away. When Mathild returns to town, the procession keeps the streets busy, making it simple for her to slip inside a home kill the proprietors and choose a position on their roof from which to watch Jack until Pavel also shows up. When Jack asks Clara to flee with him, she readily agrees, and the two of them declare their love for one another. At that very time, Mathild prepares to shoot Jack, but because Jack had pre-rigged her weapon, it backfires and kills her. When Jack notices this and realizes that they are pursuing him, he gives Clara the cash and instructs her to meet him at the hidden location in the forest. Before she passes away, Mathild admits that Pavel was the one who sent her when Jack checks on her. Jack raises his gun at Benedetto, when he unexpectedly shows up to investigate, but he doesn't fire since he's learned his lesson from Ingrid. Jack apologizes to the priest and leaves to hunt for Pavel, purposefully walking into an empty alley to attract attention. Pavel takes the bait and moves in closer, but Jack spins around and shoots him till he kills him. Later, Jack uses his car to drive to the forest, but as soon as he realizes Pavel actually hit him, and he's slowly bleeding to death, he begins to feel sick. Jack keeps trying to make it to the forest, where he finds Mathild waiting for him. Desperately reaching out for her, he passes away before he can say goodbye. 